All right, what is up, YouTube? Have you ever wanted to sound like Maroon 5, Justin Bieber, Ariana Grande, Ed Sheeran? Also, after hearing a pop song, have you ever asked yourself, could I make this because the track sounded simple? Well, the answer is most likely yes. Even if you are not an experienced producer and you don't know how to make full songs, you only know how to make loops, well, you're already in the right spot because Today's pop music mostly revolves around repetitive loops. So in this video, I'm gonna be walking you through a pop track that I made on Ableton using only Ableton instruments and audio effects. So if you are an Ableton user, you can follow right along. And if you're using a different DAW, I'm gonna be as thorough as I can be so y'all can follow along as well. So yeah, let's just hop right in, wait. This video is actually sponsored by DistroKid. So I use DistroKid personally for my band that I have with my friend Unfamiliar Keys. Check us out if you want. And then I'm also going to be releasing my own music through DistroKid. So yeah, in a few minutes, I'll talk more about DistroKid and why I use them. But let's just hop right into the beat right now. All right, so here is our track. We have the beat, which consists of these tracks right here. And then down here is our vocals. So I'll talk about the vocals later. Right now, I'm actually going to mute all of our vocals so we don't hear them. And let's just focus on the beat. So one of the biggest things about pop music is how catchy a song is. Because if a listener has uh, your song stuck in their head, even if they don't know you, they already know your song. And that's a win. So we want our track to be as repetitive as it can be. So the way I did that is I grabbed this uh, glass piano, which is an instrument in Ableton, and I wrote down uh, these chords. I'm gonna solo it real quick. Wrote down these chords. And that basically loops throughout the whole song. So there's our repetitiveness already. And you might be thinking, you know, that's pretty unoriginal, it's not creative, but pop music. So our track starts off with this glass piano. I threw in a chorus. I'm going to show you what this chorus actually is doing. So without the chorus, this is what our glass piano would be sounding like. Which sounds nice, but I definitely want it to be a little bit thicker. So we turn on the chorus. Definitely just brings in a lot more space and thickness. So once it hits this first verse, uh, we're gonna get a snap and then a little pop. So snaps are big for pop music. Definitely recommend you throwing a snap in somewhere. And the good thing about the snap is that you can have the snap in the first verse and then you can switch it up and throw in a clap during the chorus. And that just adds more spice to your track. So let's listen to this first verse with the snap and the pop. Just a simple pattern. And then chorus. So let's walk through the chorus track by track. So here's our glass piano. As you can see, I'm adding more chords to change the chorus from the first verse. And then we're gonna throw in this bright marimba, which is a mallet on Ableton. You can just go to your instrument rack go to mallets somewhere over here. There we go. And then what I did is I grabbed the chords from the glass piano, hold down control, drag it down to my bright marimba, and now they're both playing the same chords. So let's throw on that marimba over our glass piano. And then I made a melody with this clear icon instrument. So let's throw that in. So just a super simple melody, but it definitely gives the chorus uh, more character and it switches up the chorus from the first verse so they sound a little bit different. So now we're moving on to the 808. I threw in the uh, Ableton Simpler, which allows you to sample uh, sounds and that's what I use to sample my 808s. So I threw in this Sony 808 
and I made this pattern. I throw in this overdrive and then I throw in a sausage fattener and then I boost the lows just a little bit with this EQ8 and then I side chain my 808 to my kick using a glue compressor. So let's solo the kick along with the 808 and every time the kick hits you're going to see uh, this knob bounce up and it's going to be lowering my 808 because when you have a kick going at the same time as an 808. Uh, the frequencies are going to clash and it's going to give you some like dissonance. So if you throw on a glue compressor or a compressor and you side chain the 808 to the kick, the 808 is going to clear up some space for that kick to hit and have a spot in the mix. So both of them together sounds like this. So here is a 808 trick that I use. Um, I've started experimenting with different ways to add more flavor to my 808 and this is one of the ways that I found out I could do that. So the way I do it is I duplicate my 808. So now I have two tracks, two 808s. So I'm going to raise the notes on this 808 up one octave. So control A, grab all the notes and then shift alt up move it up one octave. So this is what our new 808 sounds like now. Which is not what we want. So the reason I do this is because I want a second 808 track to kind of bring in the highs for the 808 because obviously the best part of an 808 is the lows because it's going to give you that thump. But I want my 808 to also have a presence on the highs. So I raise it up an octave and then I'm going to go to my EQ bring the highs in, take some of the lows out so it doesn't clash with this 808. So now we're right here, let's bring it up a little bit. And then I delete the overdrive, the sausage fattener, and then usually what I'll throw in is a chorus. So automatically there, sounding a little bit better. And then I'll throw in a overdrive. There we go. So let's pair that with our regular 808 and it's going to sound just a lot better. So obviously that's not how I do it exactly. Let me show you what kind of audio effects this track has. So my high 808, I have an overdrive and then a chorus which is what I showed you. And then I also have a saturator which is warming up the highs. And then this is what my EQ8 is looking like. And then I throw in a third party plugin, Sidewidener, just to widen the sounds a little bit. So let's give a listen to my second 808. So pairing that with our regular 808 and our kick, we just have a much fuller sound. Now let's add our instruments and this pop from the first verse. And then I have two claps, so let's throw both of those in. And then a crash right here. And then an open hat. So this is what I did for my hi-hats. I throw in a simpler again like I did with my 808, but this time it's for a hi-hat. And the reason I do that is because I want some of these uh, hi-hats to be pitched higher than the others and lower than the others. So just watch the hi-hats go and as you can see, these hi-hats are going to be higher pitch than uh, these or these. So pitching your hi-hats around is definitely a popular method that producers like to do nowadays and it just gives more flavor to your track. And then if you want some groove to your track, uh, grab all the hi-hats or just do command A. Turn your grid off and then I already did it but you're going to want to, usually your notes would be right here. I dragged them out to about right here and that's going to delay the hi-hats a little bit and it's going to give more groove to your track. Alright, so let's give this chorus a quick listen and then I'm going to talk about how I did my vocals. Alright, 
right, so moving on to the vocals. All right, guys, quick break. Let's talk about DistroKid. So I've used a lot of independent distribution services and uh, DistroKid is by far my favorite. So if you are trying to release your music as an independent artist and you're not signed to a label, most of these distribution services are gonna charge you per song you drop. So the cool thing about DistroKid is you pick a plan and it's a yearly rate and you can release unlimited songs. So the lowest plan you can get on DistroKid is the musician plan and that's only $20 a year. So you just pay $20 and then you can release however many songs you want. So obviously there are different plans, you can compare them, but if you use my VIP code, the link is down below, you can get 7% off your first year's purchase. And using that code also helps me out, so if you wanna help me out and yourself out, sign up for DistroKid. All right, back to the song. Here are our vocals. So I'm going to turn off all of these vocal effects. Well, just for this uh, verse right here. So we're gonna listen to my unmixed vocals, which they're obviously gonna sound bad because my voice is bad, but we'll just give this a quick listen and then I'm gonna show you how I mixed these vocals. So let's listen to them with a the beat. I'm ready if you are too. Please don't forget what I've done for you. All right, already sounding flat and unflattering. So the first thing that we're gonna do, and the first thing that you should be doing if you're making a pop track is throwing on your auto-tune. So right here I have auto-tune EFX. So this plugin costs money, so if you want a free auto-tune, one that I've used for probably a year and a half until I got this, is uh, M Auto Pitch. So I'll link that in the description below if you want to snag that. Really good auto-tune and it's free, so there shouldn't be a reason that you're not getting it. So now that we have the auto-tune on, let's give a listen. Let's see if it sounds maybe a little bit better. I'm ready if you are too. Please don't forget what I've done for you. All right, already sounding picture perfect. All right, so here is my Zoll vocal template. So I use this vocal template whenever I'm making a song, really. If I'm recording vocals, I'm throwing this template on. So the cool thing about this template is I record vocals, throw in an auto-tune, and then I just grab this template, throw it on, and it gives me a perfect place to start for mixing. Basically just throws on a template and makes my vocals sound 90 times better. So if you want to learn how to make this specific template, watch my how to mix your vocals video should be somewhere you can click somewhere over here. In that video, I show you how to make this exact template so you can throw it on any time that you're recording vocals. So let's give a listen to the vocals again and then I'm gonna turn it on and you're just gonna automatically see that this makes all the difference. I'm ready if you are too. Please don't forget what I've All right, the auto-tune helped but it's still sounding flat. Turn on the vocal template. I'm ready if you are too. Please don't forget what I've done for you. Love's got me running races. But she don't care if this is wasted. So that's what we have for a first verse. So before I move on to the chorus and what I did over here, let me show you what this thing is. So let's turn it on. So I use this to introduce my vocals. So let's just give it a listen. I'm ready if you are too. So I call these sweeps, and the way I record them is I grab like the first note that I hit with my voice, which is gonna be right here. If I can grab it, there we go. Okay, well, that's not what I wanted. We're just gonna have to do this like this. Okay, so um, um, um. you just want a solid note, you don't want any mixtures of notes, just one solid note. Up. The first note that you hear. Up, up, up. So that's what we have, that's what I like. The first step that you're gonna do is throw in a bunch of reverb. So I'm just gonna go over to my reverb. Let's do something bright, bright room. Throw it in before the limiter. Now let's give it a listen. Up, up, 
Okay, so you're gonna need a lot of decay time, so just drag this up. Okay. Don't really like that reverb, actually. We're gonna throw in ambience, see if that's a little bit better. It is better. All right, so there we go. The reason I threw on this reverb is to give this note a tail. So it turned this quick note into a note that probably lasts this long. So now we're gonna throw in an audio track and we want it to record this track right here. So we're gonna go down here, verse, that's what it's called. Go to record and then we're gonna record it. Wait until it's done. There we go. And then we're gonna double click on it and reverse it. So now it sounds like this, which sounds perfect. And then we throw it in before this, and it takes a while to like move it around, get the perfect sound that you want. Usually what I'll do, make it kind of short and then use these little faders and fade it in slowly. So I'm gonna turn this intro off and we're gonna give this one a listen to see if it sounds good. I'm ready if you are to Sounds great. So that is how I made this little I'm ready sweep. if you are to Please don't forget what I'm All right, so now we're on to the chorus. So I have a second track for the chorus because the chorus I wanted to mix the vocals a little bit differently. I have all these chains down here which you can learn in the mixing your vocals video. Uh, and I wanted to adjust them to make the chorus sound a little bit different than the verse. So let's give the chorus vocals a listen. Yeah, if this is wasted, it's true that I want you, but I need to know why you can push through. It's true that I want you, but I need to know why you can push through. So that sounds good, but. I wanted just a little bit more. So I threw in a background track. So we're just gonna solo it. And basically I wanted multiple voices to be going along with the chorus because I didn't want the chorus just to be one simple track just like the verse, you know? I wanted the chorus to be different. I wanted to have multiple voices. So I threw in this background track. And what you're gonna wanna do to your background tracks is have the background tracks reverb a lot higher than your regular track. So this track is soloed. Let's give a listen to what this track sounds like. Let's give a listen to the chorus with our background track as well. Got me on a races, but she don't care if this is wasted. It's true that I want you. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I really hope that you learned something. I tried to throw in as many tips as I could into this short video. So thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for making it this far. You've watched the whole video, so that's awesome. So at the end of this video, I will give you a snippet of this song. You can listen to the full song on SoundCloud. The link will be in the description, so check that out if you want. It's a pretty sick uh, pop track. It's, it's about as simple as you can get, but it's, it's a good song, I think. I hope. I wish. All right, guys, so if you could follow my uh, new Insta, at ProdByZol, I'm gonna be posting a lot on there. Um, I used to tell y'all to go follow my personal Insta, but I definitely want a completely new Insta to just throw out all of the content that I can. Also, um, a lot of y'all are hitting me up asking if I mix or produce for other artists, and I do. So if you want a track mixed or produced for you, uh, DM me at ProdByZol or email me at UnfamiliarBeats. Both links are down below. Um, and let me know that you're a subscriber. And I usually stay within my subscriber's budget no matter where it's at. So hit me up. Let me know if you want a beat or you want your track mixed. Let me know where your budget's at and we can work from there. So yeah, thanks for watching. Go check out DistroKid, link down below. And listen to my song.
Peace. I've been reaching towards the stars for us, but with you on my back, I can't reach far. No, no. I've been reaching towards the stars for us, but with you on my back, I can't reach far. It is true that I want you.